Pare ci pere ingi spare tu sancti. Amen. But today is a, um, a ferial day. Uh, we're saying the commemorated Saint um, Agapitus. Uh, but I will be preaching on uh, a, a special request. Uh, this is uh, Claire of Monte Falco and uh, her life here that I will read to you was sent to me by Steve Cunningham, a former parishioner and a curator and a owner of Census Fidelium, the website. So uh, he sends me these saints every now and then. is like, hey, Father, this is a good one. Like, you should do this one. So, all right, Steve, this one's for you. And it, she is. She's a really good saint, as you'll find out. So St. Clair of Monte Falco, uh, born in 1268 uh, and died in 1308, and she is also called St. Clair of the Cross, and you'll find out why. So uh, little, little St. Clair was born at Monte Falco, Italy, around uh, 1268, as I said. Her older sister, Joan, and uh, a friend of hers lived in a small community of third order Franciscan nuns. And so when Claire was six years old, she joined them. So little six-year-old Claire joins her older sister and one of her friends and started living as a Franciscan tertiary. Uh, so uh, by 1290, the little community had become a big community. And Claire, from the time she was six and now she's 22, she had lived as a, a Franciscan. Uh, so her older sister Joan and the community petitioned the bishop uh, to become uh, an actual established order of nuns. Because uh, third order is, third order is secular. And you're living in the world, but you're, you're living as, um, uh, as cloistered, or not as cloistered, but, but as nuns. You're, you're praying, you're living in community, you're reading the divine office, even though you may have secular jobs and you're not bound by any vows. Uh, second order, second order is, uh, refers to women, that order of women, and that's what we think of as nuns and sisters, cloistered in a convent, teaching sisters, wearing the habit, that's second order. First order is, is just the men, right, the priests and the monks and the brothers living in a community. So, so this third order of Franciscans wanted to become uh, uh, fully, fully fledged nuns, but apparently at this time, uh, the Franciscan order for women wasn't yet fully established. Right, St. Clair of Assisi had, had founded um, you know, her community of sisters, but it's got to go through a canonical process and so on. So in any, any case, in 1290, they couldn't become Franciscan nuns, so they became Augustinians. So Augustinian nuns. Uh, so um, uh, Clair's older sister, Joan, uh, was the abbess, uh, elected the abbess of this new foundation. But just one year later, Joan died, and little Claire, well, she wasn't so little, but she was 23, uh, was elected as abbess. And that was, um, uh, and then just a few years after that, in 1294, uh, Claire would have this vision that, that would give her uh, kind of her title. Uh, so that was, this was on the Feast of the Epiphany, January 6, and Claire went into an ecstasy and had an epiphany of her own. Uh, so she reported having a vision of our Lord dressed as a poor traveler, and she described him as being overwhelmed by the weight of the cross that he was carrying. And so in her vision, Claire knelt down in front of him and asked, my Lord, where are you going? And in the vision, Jesus answered her, I have looked all over the world for a strong place where to plant this cross, but I have not found any. So in, in this vision, Claire uh, has a burning desire to help our Lord carry his cross, and she makes this known to him. And he says to her, Claire, I have found a place for my cross, and he implanted it in her heart. Uh, so what went, and she was in this a vision for a number of days. I think it was um, two weeks she was unconscious. And um, when she awoke, she took the vision very seriously and then spent the rest of her life, she would be afflicted with various pains and sorrows and great suffering. Uh, but she would bear it all joyfully. Uh, so it says she was, um, uh, she would serve as abbess, teacher, mother, and spiritual director of her nuns. And her reputation um, for um, holiness attracted many visitors to the monastery, uh, but she proved to be very uh, shrewd about it. She was very practical. So she was careful not to let all of the attention disrupt the life of the monastery and the day-to-day -day management of their affairs. 
Um, in 1303, Claire built a church in Montefalco, which was not only as a chapel for the nuns, but it also served as a church for the entire town. And it was dedicated to the Holy Cross. So uh, Claire served as abbess for 16 years, and I think that it was not very long. So after her vision in 1294, it would be only 14 more years until her death. Um, and it was in August of 1308, she became so ill that she was bedridden. On, um, uh, she made her last confession on August 17th, which was yesterday, and she died uh, today, August 18th, in 1308. So that is, you know, over 700 years ago. Uh, so uh, immediately following Claire's death, um, they, they did an autopsy, and they opened up her heart, and upon inspection, it was reported that the symbols of Christ's passion, a crucifix and a scourge, were found within her heart. And what, what are we talking about? The crucifix reportedly found within her heart is a, a little crucifix about the size of your thumb. And this was supposedly found there. And um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. It says his uh, body is white except for the tiny aperture in the right side, which is a livid reddish color. Uh, the scourge and crown of thorns are apparently formed by whitish nerve fibers, and the three nails are formed of a dark fibrous tissue. And let's see, in fact, as I'm looking over this again, um, it doesn't say what it was composed of. So little tissues or whatever, but it says Christ's head is clearly visible, as are his um, um, uh, his limbs. So upon this, this report, the vicar of the Bishop of Spoleto traveled to Montefalco, burning with indignation that somebody had in this convent had planted these symbols. So even at the time, 1308, he was furious and said, this is obviously a hoax. This can't be real. So a commission consisting of physicians, jurists, and theologians conducted an investigation and they ruled out the possibility of fabrication or artifice. Uh, the vicar, so eager to punish, uh, was, was forced by, by the authenticity of it to personally verify that the, this was indeed a true miracle. Uh, and so um, uh, Claire uh, of Montefalco, Claire of the Cross, uh, in addition to this, her body also remained incorrupt for a number of years uh, afterwards. Uh, so quite, quite an astounding life and, 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 and that, that, that miracle at the end. Um, and the lesson for us, of course, is um, be a place where Christ can plant his cross. Um, it's been said before that, that oftentimes uh, people who have gone through an intense experience together will form a lasting friendship, like soldiers in battle. Uh, after, when they've been in battle, even if it hasn't been for very long, only a few months, for 80 years afterwards, those soldiers will come together and have a reunion. And they'll remember that, that very traumatic experience that they went through. Um, and that's a kind of friendship that if you haven't been through that, you can't understand. Well, why are we complaining when God wants to go through a period of suffering with us? He wants to have an intimate relationship with us that can only be forged with suffering. And so when we have those moments in our life and when we feel, it, it feels so overwhelming and we're suffering so greatly, uh, why do we not realize that this is Christ asking us, I want to have a relationship with you that I can't have any other way. There's no other way to have that relationship except through suffering. And he's offering that to us. So let us remember that. Let us remember that the next time we think this is too hard, I, I can't do this anymore, God, where are you? Why are you allowing me to suffer like this? How could you do this to me? It's the other way around. It's an incredible sign of his love. He wants to suffer with you. He wants to build you through that friendship that he's going to have with nobody else. Uh, so don't be overwhelmed by your sufferings. Uh, embrace them. And embracing them, you're embracing Christ there on the cross. And let him say, even as he said about St. Clair of the Cross, I have found a place I can put my cross. May God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.